Hello and welcome to the Fatu Network News Review. I am Fatu Kamara and we will bring you the news first and immediately after that we will be talking about rape. Uh, recently, if you check on social media, uh, there's a lot of talk there about uh, sexual assault, men who uh, allegedly rape women. We'll be talking about that. We have experts right here in the studio. So they'll be talking to us what rape is, what it does, and what the victims, what is expected of the victims. We have seen that uh, there's been a lot of live videos out um, this past weekend, and also a lot of people coming forward saying that they were raped. But first, we're going to start with the newspapers. And we only have the Point newspaper here today. And it says no constitutional immunity for young Kubature. And that is said to be from the Supreme Court. It says that declaration was made by the Supreme Court of the Gambia. And it says the constitutional immunity claimed by Yanku Bature, a former juncta and one-time minister of local government and lands, had been declared ineffective uh, and uh, a nullity issued by the Supreme Court of the Gambia in 2001, a legal practitioner confirmed to the point. Uh, so this is actually came from a legal practitioner. Um, I guess this is why I saw a lot of uh, comments today on Facebook about this headline. And uh, Jamme rape victim blames institutional failure to investigate cases. It says Fatu Tufa Jallo, who recently um, accused the former president, Iaya Jamme, of rape, has said that lack of space and the climate of fear in the country then discouraged her to open up and narrate uh, their stories to investigators. And SKJ and Sons clo uh, donate clothes to URL disaster victims. And ex-diplomat economist Ibutal dies at 82. He is the father of the current uh, Bar Association president, Salih Tal. And um, the newspapers are also reporting that ECOWAS adopts ECO as name for the plan common currency. Uh, it is said that this will come into effect in 20, was it 2021? I just want to make sure because I can't see it anywhere in the report. Um, it says that uh, leaders of the of the member states of the Economic Community of West African States, known as ECOWAS, formally agreed Saturday to name a plan, a, a common currency, the ECO. And Barrow Science, no ECOWAS agreements on tourism, child marriage, and others. That is all in the newspaper, and that's the Point newspaper. So right now, we are going to get into the program because uh, Fatu has another engagement that she's uh, going to. I have in the studios Fatu Balde. She is um, the chairperson, the, the, yeah, the founder of Women in Liberation and Leadership, and their work is towards gender-based violence and uh, sexual violence. And I also have uh, Aliuba, of course, immortal, an activist. Right? That's where it's an activist. So they're right here to talk to us about um, rape, uh, what it is, and all these uh, issues that are currently going on. Later on, we would also call Njundu on the phone and Madi Jobati as well, because they're planning a march uh, in honor of uh, all the ladies who are coming out to say that they were raped. But rape, actually, um, we need to tell you what it is. Of course, a sexual assault, usually involving sexual intercourse or any form of sexual penetration carried out against a person without the, that person's consent. Uh, so, Ofatu, what do you make out of all these happenings right now? Everywhere you turn to on Facebook is about rape. But before we go to that, I just want to, there's a report that we have right here that I want to um, bring in so that after the report we can talk about it. The Minister of Justice on Monday said rape allegations against uh, Melville Robertson Roberts have been brought to the attention of the Minister of Justice. The Justice the Justice Minister says it is aware that a number of women have recently made serious allegations of sexual assault, including rape committed crimes against Mr. Melville Robertson Roberts, a senior official of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, so let's see this report first and then we talk about it. Robertson Roberts is at the center of a massive sexual assault scandal after no fewer than five women accused him of sexually abusing them. The alleged incidents are said to have happened at different times over the past few years. On Monday, the Ministry of Justice said in a statement it has been brought to the attention of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abubakar Tambiru that a number of women have recently made serious allegations of sexual assault, including rape committed against them by Mr. Melvin Robertson Roberts, a senior official of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Gambia. 
The Attorney General takes seriously these allegations and hereby assures the complainants and the general public that the allegations will be treated with seriousness. They deserve and will be referred to the Gambi Police Force for immediate and urgent criminal investigations. The Ministry of Justice's statement comes a day after the Ministry of Foreign Affairs informed the FATU network it has reached out to relevant authorities within the government for advice regarding Melvin Robertson Roberts, who is a Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry. Reports of Mr. Robertson Roberts sexually assaulting women first emerged on Saturday after a woman from Talinding accused him of raping her. The woman, who the FATU network will not name, said Mr. Robertson Roberts raped her in his house when she went to visit him in 2016. She later posted screenshots of her past conversations with Mr. Robertson Roberts on social media network Facebook. Her move was quickly greeted by a slew of similar accusations from other women. Mr. Robertson Roberts has denied the allegations. The accusations against Mr. Robertson Roberts come days after 23-year-old Fatu Jalo shocked the nation by claiming former President Yaya Jambe raped her. Fatu Sise reporting for the Fatu Network News Review. Yeah, hear that report there from uh, uh, Fatu Jalo's claims that uh, she was raped by former President Yaya Jambe. It kind of opened a floodgate. Now everyone is coming forward. And one name that is very prominent in all of this is uh, Melvin Robertson Roberts. Uh, but I want to ask you first about your take in this whole issue. I mean, stuff are coming out, but there are also guys saying, no, all these women were not raped. So what is your take on that? Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, first of all. Um, I think definitely Fatu speaking up about her experience has um, sparked a conversation that has been needed in this country. I think sexual abuse, almost every other woman I have spoken to has either experienced sexual abuse or knows someone who has experienced sexual abuse. I think um, Fatu speaking up has given a lot of women the confidence to come out and speak. Um, the, the allegations that we are hearing um, I think we need to listen. The fact that so many women are coming out and speaking of having had experience of rape shows that how prevalent rape is in our society and that we need to start having these conversations and we need to start having services, support services for women who come forward. But most importantly, I think what we are seeing, especially on social media, is a manifestation of what our society thinks of rape. So many of the women that came out are being accused of lying. And yeah. this is one of the reasons why many rape victims do not come out do not speak about this because of the stigma that follows mm -hmm. yeah. and I will ask uh, um, the activist right here Aliu um, this has been out and most of the time it's men who are coming out saying oh they're making up the stories and women don't want to be seen in this as uh, to make it look like a fight between men and women it is not a fight uh, what is your take on this whole situation um, the thing is <clears throat> and thank you for having me here um, this was never a fight against um, men and women or between um, masculinity and femininity but um, it is um, it is something that was meant to happen at some point that um, we have a society that is very toxic in its treatment of women and on the way it um, embraces an, uh, uh, the conversation around um, things like this so it's only a matter of time until this happens and um, it's only going to be a cyclone, a, um, a, a disruption for people who have committed these offenses. And it is a, as a man who lives in this society and had witnessed, um, not witnessed rape, but have witnessed how um, the subordination of women and um, the male, this toxic masculinity that dominates our society. Um, it was, we, we saw um, things started changing with the with the with the change of the dictatorship you know with people starting to speak up and to speak their truth and you know to be out there and women were not left behind so it was only a matter of time until this thing had happened where um, people will come out and they will um, expose these violences against their body you know against their body and um, so this is not a threat it's actually a good thing that had happened it's a good thing that everybody feels safe in the society that they live in. And you can only dust off violence against a certain section of humanity for a while, but it would not last. So what we are seeing for me 
it's um it's the beginning of a new era it's the dawn of a new era where people will not just violate people and get away with it you okay. know i mean if you haven't done anything you're good if you have done something then it will it, because we cannot keep accepting that men have been tortured and uh, and 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 they have gone through the worst and people stand up for them and they accept what they went through but they don't want to accept the fact that women are coming out with their stories that just shows the sick nature of the society and unless we accept these things we are not going to heal so i think this is it will be a traumatic uh, traumatizing event but also it from that trauma will come the healing that is to be so long deserved yes and uh, uh, fatu would uh, leave us very shortly but before you go the approach that we're seeing on social media do you think that's the best approach we see women coming out mm -hmm. uh, you know sh sharing uh, messages from uh, text messages mm -hmm. to whatsapp messages of people who they claim has raped them do you think this is the best way to go about this situation or uh, what is I think, think women are reacting this way because they are being asked to prove that they have experienced sexual violence. Um, I, I want to give the example of Sana Sabali. When he testified um, and claimed that he was uh, sexually violated, the whole country felt sorry for him. Yes. In fact, despite all the, um, the human rights violations he committed, when he said he was sexually abused, the whole nation almost forgave him. But a young girl who was innocent came out and claimed that she was raped and people were saying that that wasn't true. So you can understand why these women feel the need to prove to the world that they were sexually violated because they would be required to, to show proof. And this is why women feel the need to, to show this. I hope, I wish we had a, a society that didn't question women. Because I know in our society, for a girl to come out and say that they have experienced sexual violence, I will not question that woman. For a woman to come, come out despite the stigma, not just on her, but her family and generations to come, for her to come out and, and make such allegations, it must have happened to her. And like I said, the prevalence of sexual violence, we need to talk about that, not mm -hmm. just on adult women, but also on very young girls. We are seeing very underage girls, very young girls, being sexually abused, impregnated, and nothing comes out of it. So this is a whole systematic problem, from the household level to the community level, to the policy level, we need to change. Something needs to change. And I think the Gambian women are finally coming out in our masses and saying that enough is enough and we want action. So to these young women uh, who, um, like you said, many people are doubting their stories mm -hmm. and they still feel that the burden is on them to prove something to the point of showing text messages and stuff, uh, what would you like to tell them? Because it looks like they have the support of the government. Uh, today there was a press release that mm -hmm. says that uh, they're going to do investigations, especially on uh, Roberts and Roberts. Yeah, we, we are very happy to hear, to hear from the ministry and their stand. That is very encouraging. But also we know that many a times, so for instance, if these cases were to go to court, the questions that will come, the pressure for women to prove that they actually experience rape is going to be very high. But also just moving away from that, we know that some of these women actually reported these cases at the police but some of these cases were dropped. So this is why I'm saying it is, it is an institutional problem. Mm -hmm. From when a woman is raped, when she goes to the hospital, how she is treated, when she reports this incident to the and police. And society sees her because exactly. a lot of people would say, who would marry a woman who was raped? Exactly. So that's also another problem. So we have all these structural problems that we need to address. We need to find solutions. But before I go, one of the other things I want to say, mm -hmm. a lot of women will be re-traumatized. Some will speak out. Others who have had experience of rape, maybe years ago, just hearing other people talking about it would re-traumatize them. But we are live in a society where psychosocial support is very limited. And just today, we have, uh, from our organization, we've had several women contact us needing somebody to talk to. And we plan to organize um, peer support. Uh, psychosocial support where we will have group of uh, survivors, sexual violence survivors that will come in and they can have some support. Okay. Yeah. And how do they contact you? Um, we share um, on, we are on Facebook, Women in Liberation and Leadership. 
will yes. for sure w i l l uh, you can also follow us on twitter um, okay. and get in touch so w i l l uh, follow them on facebook and you can also follow them on twitter and you can talk to them and it's all confidential right absolutely okay thank well you. thank you very much uh, fatu balde she is uh, the uh, the founder of women in liberation and uh, leadership Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we will let, let you go and then we will have another woman who will join us here to talk about this. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned then. Yes. Thank you. The mic. The mic. Hello? Hello? How are you? I'm a different line. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you. Okay, what I'm going to do instead of my uni phone, I'm going to get a smartphone. I'm going to get a smartphone. I'm going to get a smartphone. I'm going to get a telephone. No, I'm going to get a surprise. I'm going to get a smartphone. If you are in America or Europe, you can get a smartphone. The smartphone is going to get a smartphone. It's going to get a smartphone. It's going to get a smartphone. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Okay, so uh, welcome back and thank you all very much for joining us in the studio here. I have Aliuba, an activist, and I also have Siran Dao of GAM. Uh, she is the president and one of the founding members of the Gambians Against Rape and Molestations. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. And I would uh, continue with Aliuba quickly before I come to uh, Siran Dao. Uh, but Ali, the problem that we have right here is men like you, I'm not saying that's you, but men who are saying don't believe their stories is not true. Why do you think they're doing that? Because that's, it's really unfortunate. Like she said, when Sada Sabali came out and, and explained his story, people believed him. I believe um, <clears throat> this is the point. The point is it's very convenient for men to believe other men because it doesn't pose no threat to the, the structure, the male dominant structure. But for women to come out with their stories, it is um, women were supposed to be quiet. They were supposed to be in subordination. They're supposed to be cooking and washing and doing this. And this is the God honest truth of our society. Now, when women come out to do this, what they are doing is they're breaking a tradition. They're breaking a trend that um, um, you know, see, see, they are challenging the dominance. It's deeper than just um, the rape thing. It's, it's a, when, when a woman speaks out against the violence, or not even the violence, but if a woman asserts herself, what happens is she breaks a tradition that goes back into centuries. You know, centuries of domination and subordination and dominance are broken. And when that tradition is broken, then what we find is a society where a lot of people will be challenged, a lot of rules would be challenged, a lot of assumptions, presumptions, and all of these things would be challenged. And it's not an easy thing to have this privilege for as long as you've lived and for one day for it to crumble to dust. And, mm -hmm. and another thing is it's very convenient for people who don't know what it feels like to deny things. You know, it's very easy for a man who have never felt this who has never been this powerless to understand what is really going on. I can see some people when they deny it, you could tell that it's not like they hold malice. It's just they, they can't maybe simply... Maybe is, is it like new to them? Because yes, maybe, uh, and most, most of the time people don't talk about rape openly. Issues that have to do with sexual sec violence. Yes. And not even sexual violence, just sex sexuality in general, yeah. se and sex uh, in general. So when this happens, what happens is you are, bringing into, you are bringing people into a very uncomfortable conversation. It's very convenient when we speak against the government. So yeah, so to, to avoid talking about it and stuff, the quickest way for most people is just to deny it. The basically, yeah, <laughs> denial. Basically. And, and so yeah. w w w w with, with this now, um, you see a lot of men who denied it in the beginning mm -hmm. and then they retracted and then they said we accept because what is happening is that when, 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 when people hold on to something and this is something that I want us all to remember is when we hold on to something and we collectively hold on to it, it changes things whether you like it or not and mm -hmm. there's been a complete change, this is a movement. 
and it should be um, protected. It should be rallied on. It should not just be a moment that doesn't transition into a movement. It has yeah. to be something that is solid and is, it is long-lasting. Well, thank you very much. I have uh, Sirandao here. I'm sure you've also been following it on social media. Yes. There's a lot of talk, women coming out. Um, mm -hmm. Some are saying it's not being handled properly. They shouldn't just go online, you know, making videos and talking about this openly. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that situation first before we come into the discussion proper? Um, okay, before I go there, can I just um, pick back on one, some yes. of the things that you were saying with yeah. Alu? Mm -hmm. When it comes to, so Alu touched on a very um, important point, which is um, the, our society being open and comfortable with sexuality, which mm -hmm. is a normal and natural thing. Without sexuality, we would, sexuality, we would not be here as mm -hmm. human beings. So it's a very uncomfortable zone. I just wanted to bring another element that, yes, women are in the, you know, most of the time suffering the brunt because of the social restrictions as well as the way we're, we're accepted, expected to accept mm -hmm. the you know, advantages from men, whether we like it or not. But I just also want to point out that when it comes to sexual violence and rape, men are also affected. They're very mm -hmm. much affected. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as prevalent as women, and it's not just, um, you know, Yefi Tubab. It's happening in Gambia. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, GAM has a website that we have had um, up for a while. Speak up, it's called uh, speakupgambia.com. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we got a man posting a story, sharing a story on the website. How, he was, was how he was molested oh. by um, his brother's best friend oh, wow. for years. He's now an adult, he's married with children, but he cannot share it. You, I mean, they do the, it's even worse for the men when they are sexually violated in, this, in our community. And it's, it's a global problem. It's a human problem that has started from generations, centuries, even in the times of the prophets. We have women being raped, and this is, a, this is a phenomenon. It's a human thing. It's not a Gambian problem. It's a human thing. Now, mm -hmm. coming back to the platform that you're talking about, about how, you know, going onto social media, Fatou said, what Fatou said was very, very apt. Mm -hmm. Women um, are being asked to prove. Yes. And this is something that happens in private. Even when you have a, like a, a, you know a conscientious you know very 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 pleasing sexual moment, it's not that something that you go out and talk about. Let alone something that is very traumatizing mm -hmm. and something that is shameful to you. Um, you know so your body being affronted. It's not something that you want to talk about. But when society is doubting you and you're being you know didn't, you know disbelieved, people don't believe in, don't believe you, you have that. The other aspect also. But is do that they really have to prove anything? Um, they don't have to, but they feel like they do. Yeah. The other aspect is oh, there's no platform. Mm -hmm. Where do we go? Where the, do you go? The police. Um, the police. I, have you ever been to a police station in a sexual... You go... I went one time. I had, there was a case I went in one time. I'm sitting mm -hmm. with the... There's a train counselor. I'm sitting in the room with him. And then his body just comes in and starts listening to the story. Mm. You know, supposed it, this is supposed to be confidential. It's supposed to be confidential. Yeah. The, um, you know, the, the space is not there. The platform is not there. We talk about you know, police being trained, but it is not something that is really happening on the ground. So we need to have the platform. It's a system that needs to change from the household. When you have these things happening, where it starts, most of these things start from the The acceptance starts from the household because you're just taught to accept it as a woman or you know, as, an, as a victim if, you, um, if, you, if it happens to you. If it doesn't happen to you, if you're a perpetrator, you're just, you know, you you bale kwa you know, yeah. you yeah. so we need to create the platform, we need to create the institutions, and we need to have it. You know, it is a crime in this mm. country. It is a crime. The sexual um, sexual violence bill has been, you know, updated in uh, I think in the last few years. So things are changing. It's a crime in the country, but it's yet still. We are talking about torture and like you're saying, Sana Sabah, all these things being accepted and you know, people are gasping and you know, oh, how mean is this thing? But when a woman comes out and is being abused, one of the worst things that can happen to a human being or a man, if for that matter, we are, we are having a problem with it. So we need to create the platform. And so the now that the Minister of Justice came out, they did a press release this morning and said that uh, uh, people who uh, have a story to tell should contact the, uh, the police. But just hold on one second. Lamin is at the High Court where Yanko Bature is taken right now. Let's see if there is any uh, development up there. Hello, uh, Lamin, I'm, I'm live on air. Do you have anything? Yes, good afternoon, Fadu. Um, I'm here at the High Court in Banjo where the High Court has demanded Mr. Yanko Bature to pay for his appeared before the High Court. But uh, once the case was mentioned, actually uh, the justice minister himself uh, represented the state. Uh, eh? But then wow. uh, the <laughs> charges were not read in court. Mm -hmm. In charge of uh, what they are saying is that the, uh, he will be charged on a felony, uh, you know, charge. But then they haven't read the, the charge in court. So they are remanding him. They said, uh, according to the justice minister, I'm standing right outside where the, uh, the band uh, uh, carrying Yanguba Ture has just left. Uh, mm -hmm. to go to mile two now. There is a lot of heavy security, a lot of police officers here. 
paramilitary officers, a small crowd have also uh, gathered here to show their support to Mr. Ture. But like I said, in court today, the charge was not read. So no one they could not know whether um, it's murder or, or, or some other charge. What mm. was said at court is that um, uh, the crime that they want to press or the charge that they want to press against Mr. C is a, is a felony charge. Uh, so now um, he has been taken to Maldu. Uh, he will be brought back to court on Monday. Mm -hmm. So you said the justice minister himself is uh, representing the state. That's what you said, right? Yes, he himself appeared for his case. But oh. what he did, he prayed the court to give the lawyers, as the state attorneys, some time, mm -hmm. because as well as the accused sometimes, to, to sit and discuss and review uh, the case, uh, what, what is going to be done next. next. So Yankuba, uh, was Yankuba's lawyers, uh, were they there too at the, at the court today? Well, actually, we were a bit late, so I, we, we, they didn't allow us to under. But when Yankuba emerged, when he came out of the court, it was just him and uh, the security officers. Those are the paramilitary officers who are escorting him. So now they have, they have, they have taken him to mile two now. So now what happened to the, th the, uh, the three days, the 72 hours? Is that why he had to come to court today? So they can have yes, more time, I mention the case, and then send him back to mile two? I am assuming, yes, that is exactly why. They, because you have to understand that a lot of people were anticipating that he would appear in court uh, last Friday, but he didn't appear. So today, the, 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 the state had to make sure that he, uh, he, he comes to court. So he came. Uh, like I said, but he would appear next Monday when the case would be mentioned uh, proper. So there were WhatsApp uh, audios going around uh, that uh, the APRC, which is the party that Yankuba belonged to, that uh, they want people to come out and, and, and be at the court to show solidarity to Yankuba. Were there a lot of people at the court from the APRC? So, so it's a small crowd. You wouldn't know whether these are APRC because they are not doing anything that will show that they are from the APRC. But then a small crowd has gathered here and then they, they, they were shouting as soon as Yankuba came out. They were shouting, some had their small placards with them. Um, I mean, meant to just show support to, to, to Mr. Ture. What did they say on the uh, placards? Well, the placard, I couldn't go closer to the placard because since the placard, it, it's a paper placard, so I wouldn't know what's written in the placard, on the placard. But from where I'm standing, I could see that these are people who are here to, to tell him that all is well, that they are with him all the way through. Okay. So were there police? How was the police presence? So were there paramilitary with uh, guns or how was that like? police presence here. You know, they came in their, their trucks. Uh, the, that the police, um, the armed police, that the police intervention you know, unit personnel were the ones who are here. So mm -hmm. now the crowd, small crowd has started to disperse now. The police have also boarded their trucks and they are leaving the court now as I'm, as I'm speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Lamin. Is there anything else that you want to tell us? What is the mood there, or now everyone is dispersing? Well, I think the country should brace for uh, a very interesting uh, case, you know, because um, the, uh, the, the government is quite passionate when it comes to this issue. The Attorney General himself is someone who is very much in I mean, last week he, he issued a statement where he said he's going to vehemently prosecute uh, Mr. Toure. Uh, all with respect of uh, his behavior uh, at the TRRC when he appeared there, and we, we, which yeah, everyone knew, already knows uh, that he, he, he said he was not going to testify, which, uh, you know, led to some drama at the, at the TRRC. So it is going to be a, a quite enervating affair, this case. Thank you very much, uh, Lamin. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Fado. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that's the Yankuba Ture case right there at the court. Yes, it's 72 hours, so he was taken to court and it was mentioned. But uh, like Lamin said, they will have to go back to court again. And the attorney general appeared there for the state. Uh, so let's go back to our topic, which is uh, the rape uh, topic that is out there on social media. Uh, when it first came, it was Fatu Jallo who was talking about uh, what happened to her with Jami, that Jami raped her, and now it looks like that uh, topic is being watered down by the Melvin case. Yes, um, mm -hmm. a good thing, a good thing, because uh, it's being watered down, but it's also bringing the, 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 the issue mm -hmm. up front that, uh, yes, Jami was the brutal one, uh, was, you know, was the, was the most prominent one, but there are others that are out there. And if you also look, uh, go back, um, 
I think Fatu, before Fatu, there was, uh, was it Aisha? Yes. There was another lady back, mm -hmm. um, even at the time of January, that was struggle, yeah. during the struggle, mm -hmm. that also came out. And I actually just um, saw her video, um, listened to the voice again yesterday, and that talked about these things. And at that time, people were really angry at Jamie, but we all understood what the, at that time what was happening. But um, I think somebody said something, this has been like a cycle. It comes up and then it goes down. But it looks like for now, Mm -hmm. With this, uh, with Fatu being c coming out, with Jamie's case being so prominent and an international, um, international case, with all of these people, we can take. We need to take advantage of this momentum and really push the movement. Mm -hmm. At GAM, when we started GAM, we call ourselves a movement because we believe this has to be a movement, something that continues on and on and on. GAM actually came about when, when at the time of Balafong on Facebook at that yes, time, when that. somebody posted a story about being sexually violated, just out of frustration, she had her story on Facebook. So when she did that, we all came together and started GAM in 2012 mm -hmm. and call it the GAM movement continuing and trying to push so it the forefront. So it's from. been on since So it's time. been on since then. Mm -hmm. But again, like you said, it comes. we need to really have people keep it up and um, sensitization is key. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it sh for me, it doesn't have to be high, uh, you know, high profile all the time. You know, but we, it needs to be at the homes where we're talking about it, where we're protecting and try as our best as possible to protect our children, to protect the innocent and also to make sure that justice is done when these things happen. And uh, Aliu, there's a lot of people saying in the comments, but how about some of these girls, the way that they dressed? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Is that something that anyone can, should go by? Like saying somebody, because of the way they're dressed, I, I should rape them? Is that, does that even make I think, sense? That's I think really the wall have come too far for people to use arguments like okay. that. I think Absolutely. those arguments have been addressed so many times yes. mm -hmm. that it would be very, very shameful for somebody to try to bring that argument. Mm -hmm. You know, the... Um, it's it's a very stupid an, uh, argument. For example, you see somebody selling food and you're hungry, but they're selling it. Mm -hmm. You just don't go and get the food and eat it. You pull out money you to pay. pay. Oh. But you see the food, it's there. Mm -hmm. that, that's, uh, I mean, that's a, not even an apt example. Yeah, but even but if you don't pay, you can talk to yes. the person and see if you can yes, have an arrangement. Exactly, an you arrangement. Can pay later. The thing oh. is, um, I think um, we need to sort of accept that um, the conversation should be deeper. Like um, Sarah is saying, we, I mean, this, this, uh, there are going to be highs, and we are just at a high right now with Jame. I mean, which would be, when I saw people denying it, I was surprised because we've been knowing these stories in this country. Mm -hmm. So you start asking yourself, why is it that people will st try so hard to deny this? Some people were saying, ah, oh, but there is no proof for this. But when somebody goes to the TRC and testifies uh, that they were tortured, nobody asks for a proof. Everybody feels sorry for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, I think we, come, we have to come and realize, and somebody else said that, um, yeah, but it is not rape when your body responds, you know? And, and so this is the things that we are dealing with. I think it's about time we realized and we accept that sexual violence is really violence. We can talk about it, but maybe it hasn't sunk yet that it really is violence. Like, because in the Gambia, I have seen a lot of conversations over the years when people talk about rape, what people imagine is somebody standing in the dark and waiting for you and pouncing on you. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it doesn't happen like this. Mm -hmm. What happens is that <clears throat> most of the people who were violated were violated in their homes were violated by people close to them, were violated by people who have power, who don't need to go stand in a street corner, people who can lower you into their room, people have been violated by their boyfriends, by their husbands. All of those conversations have to happen. If a woman doesn't want to have sex, she doesn't want to have sex. You can't force people to do what they don't want to do. Yeah. We all accept that as a general principle in society. You don't walk on the road and somebody wants to give you a lift by and force. Boogaloo, boogaloo. Nobody, they can't grab you and put you in a car. That would be kidnapping. So exactly. if somebody says they don't want to have sex, if you want to have sex with them, yes. then that is a clear violation. But this argument that, uh, so there's be a, a lot of arguments. I think the arguments are actually sophisticated a bit now. You know, we need evidence. People, only a few people would say, ah, but num uh, solola. Even though a lot of people say it still, but people that, that argument have been exhausted. But a lot of people will come with things like, ah, you know, she wanted it. Why did she go there? Mm -hmm. You know, you can visit your friend. You can visit anybody you want. Mm -hmm. That doesn't warrant the person to do some things that you don't want them to do to you. So yeah. that's, that, 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 there's no argument there. Well, somebody is still saying we need to talk to some girls. Why would you visit somebody's home at night? Somebody that you just meet on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, would that yeah. still, is that still a justification? Um, well, 
that's a different story. It has nothing to do with being raped, being mm -hmm. forced into... Because that, that's, that's what she's saying. Yes. She's saying it starts there. It's, if you go into a grown man's house at night and, you know, somebody that you just meet on Facebook and then stuff happens, then how can you blame that person for that? How, they, how they, do they explain the 18-month-old yeah. baby that was raped? Yeah. How do you explain that? Yeah, it has nothing to do with that. And, uh, you know, okay, what, they, what a woman does goes going to going, even if they stand naked, mm -hmm. That that just, like, no. just like he was saying, mm -hmm. if you if your mother is buying food, you're hungry, you don't go and grab it. If you grab it, it's stealing, yes. and it's a crime. Yes. So it's the same thing with rape. Mm -hmm. Now with the with the dress thing, we have we we're, we're being bombarded by that all the time. Especially sometimes we have our ustasis. The way we're dressing, mm -hmm. it's not Islamic. Yes, I agree, but it doesn't justify rape. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think the, one of the, some of the things that we also need to forget is that rape, like I said, rape has been happening lots of you know generations and decades and centuries ago. Even at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there's a hadith on rape, that this woman was going to the mosque in the morning for Fajr prayers and she got raped. Hmm. At the time of the Prophet, was it the way she dressed? Hmm. We cannot say that at no, the time of the Prophet was going, yeah, And she was went going. and reported it to the Prophet. Hmm. And when the real culprit came out, he asked them to stone him because it's a crime. So how do you justify the, the dress thing? It is, not, uh, it is not about dressing. It is not about somebody, you know, um, telling you, you know, luring into you, you. And even if you are, you know, flirting with someone, that doesn't mean that they, 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 you, they need to, they, you know, you want it. You so talked it about institution failures and now that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Attorney General's office is saying go to the police, do you, do you think that would make any difference now? Because like you said, somebody was explaining their story and another person walked in when it's supposed to be some confidentiality. Yes, I mean going to the police, that, should be the, that, that is what the law says. Mm -hmm. They cannot prosecute anybody until you go to the police and, and report it. Yeah. That is the start, that is the entry point. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the reality on the ground is that the, the, the ins what is the incentive of you going into the police? Um, Gambia is a tool. You have You walk into the police station. You have You have Number one, hey, my dad, you do something. My colleagues, my colleagues, police. Look how bad you That's the first thing because the police stations are very open. Mm -hmm. You go into the police. Your neighbor's brother is there. Mm -hmm. He, they, you know, and he listens to the story. Your story is not private. There is no confidential. There is mm -hmm. no privacy in this. And this is a very private and shame for the most for most um, victims. Very shameful. So going to the police should be the first port of call. Unfortunately, it is not an option for most people. Mm -hmm. For most, we even see how people's family members mm -hmm. are treating them when they come out in their homes, let alone when you go to an environment that's not. The environment is hostile and um, it needs to change. Mm -hmm. Systems need to change. So um, we really need to rethink that. But institutions like Far to um, Far to Will, mm -hmm. having this so social support, yes. and GAM is also coming up with, so we're trying to come up with services where we're so allowing they can people, talk to you, so they can you. talk to us, and we yes. can help the guide through the process, mm -hmm. and, and you know, as you're the country, baby, take them, find ways to make it confidential, connect them with um, with the legal, legal, legal support, connect them with um, social support, and connect them um, with, with different resources, and doctors even when they need it. Okay. Those are institutions that are coming up, and I, I think the network against gender-based um, gender, um, gender network also is there to, to, to help um, uh, with the support services. So there, there are other institutions that are out there, and I think we should come out, and, and you should uh, you can do something that maybe you could do, you at the media, mm -hmm. showcasing these institutions that are out there so mm -hmm. that people know Definitely. we're there, yeah. so, and they can go for the help that they need and the, the support in, mm -hmm. in approaching the the, the police and how to approach the law. Yeah, I have a, a journalist uh, on the line. He is Bokar Ba from the UK. Hello, Bokar. Hello, Hadu. Greetings. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, you want to contribute? Yes, uh, basically, I just wanted to draw a few lines on to what your uh, panelists are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, it is a very interesting, uh, timely topic of discussion. But uh, like uh, all of them elucidated here, for me, this is a paradoxical relationship between law, religion, and culture. Mm. Uh, I think that is, that is where, where we are caught up right now. Uh, for, for instance, uh, you know, uh, you will hear this saying, you cannot deny your husband sex, even if you don't want it. Mm -hmm. yes. We know that. Yes. It, it, it happens in, in our society and they will usually ground their argument onto religion and culture. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when it comes to the approach that has been taken recently, I personally I, I'm not very appreciative of, of it, like taking the matter like trial by media. It, it shows our lack of confidence in our legal system. 
that is what is happening right now. And I think uh, if Gambians are really convinced uh, with a new dispensation, they have to have that confidence uh, on the legal system to be able to take this threat. Uh, look, in the UK here, uh, there is a case called Richard versus the BBC. What happened is uh, they ended up uh, paying Richard uh, for about four, 400,000 pounds because before uh, the trial would even make a decision, even the prosecution started, before it started, they started volunteering information to the BBC and the BBC published it. And then this guy went back to claim damages against the BBC. And I think that is what uh, we need to be very careful of. Another quick example would be, for instance, if a case was developed against Mr. Melvin, uh, imagine right now uh, how uh, to, it would be difficult to generate and gather evidence. For instance, if the police have intended to raid his residence, find him there, arrest him, and are able to gather some sort of evidence to support their case, now they, they may find it difficult to get it because of the approach that has been taken. Uh, I think, and also uh, people that are drawing uh, comparison to the case of Sana Sabali and the case of uh, that young girl to Fajalo, for me these are two different cases because Sana was a perceived and a fierce political opponent to Jame. Right. So one would assume that his treatment and the treatment to someone that Jame was posturing as a philanthropist ready to help her in her professional and career development. We will assume that it will be totally different uh, if one of these uh, ladies that has been opening to Jame, for instance, the UDP ladies, came out and say, I have been raped under detention. And personally, I will never deny it because I will know at the time there was that system that would encourage that because they are perceived opponents that the system will seek to dominate in all forms they could. I think that is the distinction between Sana Sabali and this particular lady. But for me, it is not my interest really to discuss the material facts of those cases. But again, if we agreed as a society to mm -hmm. develop laws that uh, we have a legal system and we have religion, a religion in this case is very important. Because the genesis of law, rules of natural justice, is from religion itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what we have to apply and avoid sensationalizing issues. Then we can move on as a society. But uh, like I said, this is a great contradiction between law, religion, and culture. Okay. We must move ahead as a society through this. But sensitization as a way forward for both sexes would be helpful that sex should be nothing but consensual and voluntary. I think that is what we need. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bokar. Um, uh, I'm sure the panelists here will talk about, uh, will also make their points out of everything that you said here. But I think where you, you were talking about trial by the media, I think the people that are out there explaining their stories, uh, that is on a personal level, but that's why the, the, the news that came out said, Take your stories to the office of the uh, Inspector General of Police, to the police. So I think whatever they're judging him on will be based on yes, yes, the information that is supplied here, to the police. No, yeah. no, no, when I said media here, I'm not, I'm not uh, making reference to particular media houses. Oh, no, 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 no it wasn't media houses. I was media. just, no, I was talking about the people who are out. Yeah. I'm not talking about media houses, but the people who came out to explain their stories by doing Facebook Live. I'm not sure if you've seen that. We saw Facebook Lives and we saw people uh, writing uh, comments and also showing some of the conversation that they had with uh, some of these people whose name they're mentioning. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying all the stuff that are on social media, I don't think that the, 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 uh, the accusers will be judged based on that. I think they'll be judged based on the information that is supplied to the police. Yes, yes, abs absolutely. But here again, 
I think society would already, you know how our society is, even if someone is innocent right now, people will be running to conclusions mm -hmm. and making life terribly difficult. In the West, you know, they, sometimes they encourage and the police will voluntarily uh, disclose and say there is an alleged rape case against this individual. Yes. And then, uh, particularly for celebrities, they do that for celebrities because they would like to know how many individuals has this particular individual met this sort of violations against so that people can come forward. They do that sometimes, okay. but not in a prejudicious manner. Well, thank you very much. I'll now yeah. let uh, uh, Sirandao and Aliuba uh, talk about some of these points that you raised. Thank well, you. thank you very much for thank your you. time. We do appreciate it. Thanks. Yes, I'll start with you, yes. Yes, so his points are very valid. Mm -hmm. But then we are in a broken system. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in a broken system? You don't have a pla you don't feel like you have a platform. You're being doubted. You're being questioned, even by the people that you love and care about. Where do you go? What do you do? Yeah. You turn to what you feel that you're... Yeah. I, I cannot imagine this being easy for any of these victims that are out there. It must be tough. I cannot imagine. Yeah, you have out. to live with the people, you have the people in your home. People will start, will be looking at you differently, your neighbors, your friends. Mm -hmm. Those, some of them are working. Um, we have here people sharing some stories but refusing to say their names because they are now married. Can you imagine if those people you know, were to come out? So we're in a broken system that everything is mixed up. Yes. Now we have to sieve through all the debris and start looking at now, how do we fix it? We have the legal system. Mm -hmm. That is no doubt. We have the legal system that is supporting these victims if they go to the police. But like you said, the social, the cultural, and the religious part of it makes it very, very, very difficult to get the, the crime, the, the, the due things it deserve. And there could be accusations which are even false. And the, 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 the accused, you know, also has to be cleared. But, you know, how, how do we get there? Yeah. So it is very complex. And um, now is a good time. He mentioned sensationalizing things. Mm -hmm. But sometimes this is what it takes for us to really sit back and look at what we have and try to put it together to make sense so that we do not have to go through this process. As human beings, uh, we should not watch our fellow human beings go through something like this. It is not right. It needs to be fixed. Um, things are complex. Things are complicated. There is no right solution at the moment. But let's keep the movement going. Let's keep the conversation on at the home, uh, you know, at the schools, in the offices, which is another kind of worms that we were weak, that if we were to talk about, you know, how authority is used and, you know, the promise of a job is used to sexually abuse both men and women um, in every shape of, or form. That's another thing that we need to be having this conversation and finding ways to accept that it happens and uh, give it the due attention that it deserves and um, take it to the system. And uh, Leo, before we go, we will let you also give us your take on what he said and then we will come back and do your closing remarks. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I would want to just make a few things clear. Mm -hmm. We talk about the law and the rule of law and how important it is and how important it is to apply it. But um, and this is not just um, co uh, uh, confined to Africa or third world countries, but all over the world. Issues regarding sexual violence are not things that you, you can just, um, you know, even the Me Too movement was a sensational movement that started in, in the media. Mm -hmm. And I, we must remember that the law at most times protect the rich and the powerful. When we look at the genesis of what we call the law today was created during feudal times to protect the interests of the wealthy and the land-owning class. You know, it was never, um, I mean, things have changed. There's been an evolution where um, the most downtrodden people have been um, uh, uh, um, empowered through that same law. But we should not forget that if a girl who has nothing, who you know, even became a victim by just seeking help for the most basic necessities of life, would not just um, go to the courts, doesn't have the means, is scared to go to the police station. Like Sira was saying, you can go to the police station and people start asking what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, the stigma that is attached to that. And it is even more powerful, you know, it's easier for a lot of these victims to go to the police and not, nobody would know what they did and then to be on, um, uh, 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 on social media to expose themselves like that. I think um, we must acknowledge that this requires a lot of courage, a lot of tenacity, a lot of bravery to come out and, ex uh, and, 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 and mm. say. And also the trial by media, there will always be situations like that. It is not, for me, I mean, if you are, I mean, 
and, and I've seen a lot of people are not even saying he did it. They're using the word alleged. You know, and, and that's, that's a good thing that, that is happening. Yeah. The presumption of innocence. Until At the same yeah. time, we must remember that, you know, there is so much a society can take in following conventional means and following conventional standards. Even you go to the, if you're a poor person, you take somebody as powerful as somebody who, who had um, allegedly victimized you and is a powerful person, educated, wealthy, moves in the high circles. There are slim chances that you will win your case against them. Yeah, you but know. no, not everybody will support your case, even no matter what you do. I mean, there will always be doubters, people who doubt. And, and, and I just want to say quickly about the whole comparison with Sanda Sabali. I don't see how it is wrong. I don't see how there's a problem with that, with that, with, with that comparison. Of course, Sanda Sabali was seen as an opponent, and his story would easily be believed. But at the same time, we must remember, Sanda Sabali was once cozying up to Jami. You know, and Jame had narrated one uh, narrative for a long time that made him look like uh, uh, um, he was in the wrong. It took this, um, this, this, this testimony did at the TRRC for people to start believing that uh, perhaps there is a chance that Jame set him up. But before that, we believe that he was as complicit as Jame. So, uh, but he was giving the benefit of the doubt more than these people. So we have to acknowledge that there is an issue of the patriarchy here, there is an issue of uh, gender here, mm -hmm. and we cannot just brush it aside as ne, he was a fierce opponent, so he was easy to be believed. Thank I don't you. think it's that simple. Thank you, Aleo, and uh, to uh, Sirandao, the ladies that are coming out and speaking out, and mm -hmm. it's very difficult for them, people mm -hmm. doubting them, mm -hmm. which makes them to go to the extent of showing text messages and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, which is also uh, a bit uncomfortable, especially when you share messages with people now. Mm -hmm. Everybody but will, a lot of people will be sitting on eggshells like, yes. I hope my message is not going to come out. <laughs> come I hope my name will not be out. Yeah. Is that yeah. the best approach for this kind of situation? Definitely not the best. Mm. Definitely not the best. Because these things also can come back and, and, and haunt the lady. Because I saw one text message when she was actually just having a, you know, just chatting and laughing as well. Mm. So putting out that out there, people might be even judging, saying that, oh, she's having a chat. So she might have enjoyed just chatting. Mm -hmm. Now, chatting with somebody and, you know, having a laugh is different from that person you know, uh, put you know, you know, abusing you against your will, trying to sexually abuse you. That's a different thing. So it's definitely not the, not the right approach. But but again, I go back to what I said. Um, most of them, like Fatu said, are being feel like they're being forced to prove them, prove that the story was right. Mm -hmm. How do you prove rape? Unless somebody was there yes. and witness it. You cannot, oh, there's you cannot, a video you cannot prove, camera you cannot prove, or something. Or there's a video camera or something. Yeah, that is something that you cannot, you cannot prove. So it's very difficult. And then, oh, um, and then also, again, like we, we just keep going, the system does not allow you to go anywhere. Your family members, your neighbors, your best friends. You tell your best friend, hey, you, ye. Yeah. come on. Yes. I'm telling you this person, <laughs> is that something that the best thing we do first, I think to solve, one of the things we do is, when a woman comes out and says this, we say, I believe you. I support you. Right? The perpetrator is innocent until proven guilty. Yes. Yes. But, you know, how we, you know, and if that person is lying, then the, the law goes also against her. Because the law's, law is not here just for the, for the, for the victims. Yeah. If you lie also, the law goes uh, is yes. hard on you. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we have to. Um, it's not right, but again, system made of us. So how does one approach, uh, contact your organization if they need um, help? Like you said, yes. uh, they, there's a lot of confidentiality in that too. If they come to you, talk yes. to you, and you help them take their case further. Yes, we actually try to support them. And even when they need to get legal support, we guide them and protect their confidentiality as best as possible. Um, so right now we have the fa our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We are also on Twitter where we can be contacted. And what's as the a, name of the Facebook? Um, GAR Movement. G-A-R-M. G-A-R-M Movement. Movement. That's the Facebook page. We're also putting together a, a, a telephone line, a hotline that we expect to have in the next couple of days where people uh, can call. We are putting together resources, psycho, psych, psychosocial support, including Will. We are partnering, um, doing, tried looking at a partnership with Will mm -hmm. and some other yeah, member psycho, uh, psychosocial support uh, therapists like Mam Uli Chongan. Um, uh, and other people coming together. I myself, I am a trained, um, I'm a trained cri uh, crisis counselor, mm -hmm. so I can offer a certain degree of, of support, talking to them, and you know, just helping them walk through the process and understanding what is happening. We also have legal, um, pe legal people in our team that can also help guide you if you need to wanted to take it there. We also arrange if they need uh, medical attention. Mm -hmm. Do we have connections with doctors that we can go? So right now we can be contacted through our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You can. Um, it's G A R M. G A R M movement. That's mm -hmm. our Facebook page. 
Um, in the next day or two, we would also have a telephone line that people can call in. I'll share that with you so that you can share it with okay. your neighbor. We also have a, a website um, where people people that are not ready to, sh to come out yet can, can share their stories because yeah. it's it's also another healing, part of the healing process for victims to, to see that it's not just them, it's not just me. Mm -hmm. Hearing other stories can also help that you, I'm not isolated, I'm not crazy. This thing does happen. So we have, um, for those that are wanting to, you know, just vent out their, their stories and don't have anybody to talk to, we have speakupgambia.com where you can go and share your story. It's anonymous. You can be, you can put in your name if you want to. You can put in all your details, or you can just be anonymous. Um, we just check and we don't keep any track of. We don't keep track of your information. We make it very anonymous and very private where you can just vent. And like I said, people have already again started sharing stories. We've had um, three or four stories in the last 24 hours that people are sharing, mm -hmm. um, including a gentleman that was raped by his. Um, by his um, friend's uh, bro brother's friend mm -hmm. um, and other stories that are coming up so those are all ways that we're trying to support um, so let's keep it going and we encourage um, the media to really put attention to this and not just that but also what is available for the victims what redress where can they get help where can they get support legally um, you know emotionally uh, psychologically and also um, uh, medically if that is needed okay well thank you very much uh, Alu final word in about one minute Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what I would advise is um, that we, we keep the momentum going and I hope the government of the Gambia takes this very seriously. I mean, news came in that the Attorney General himself is representing the state in the case of uh, Yanku Bature. Mm -hmm. I hope um, they see that this is, as, this is even more serious than what Yanku did and that it is taken <laughs> very seriously. <laughs> because the thing is, if you don't protect your women folk, where would you get to as a nation? If you don't have developed uh, women, who are educated and are empowered and as, uh, and can make uh, a con conscious contribution to society, which is half of the nation or more than half, then you're not getting anywhere. I think politicians so, need to realize that it is beyond rallying women to get votes and to realize that they are a part of our society. It's not about being your sister or your mother or your, as a woman, period, as a human being, should be treated and should be protected in this society. So I hope they take these cases very seriously and like the, the Minister of Justice have already taken um, a step and I hope that that engagement pro uh, continues. And unless, you know, until that time, we, I hope the movement lives on and more predators are exposed and that and our women folk are protected. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Final word. Well, final word is just um, let's support people when they come out with a, with a problem. They, um, it's a crime. It is a crime. It is a crime. Uh, and we need to treat it as such. Um, it's just like when somebody steals from you, um, you don't want it. It's uncomfortable. You go to the police. We should, um, people that are victims should be afforded the same uh, rights. It's their right. For them to go to the police so i really implore i know that there's been a lot of effort a lot of resources that has been put in the police department to really um, to really capacitize them to be able to handle these cases i want to see that in practice when you go to the police station whether whatever crime you go it is always crowded you cannot go mm -hmm. and this is something that really can you know they are trained about they, they are trained they are trained yeah. i've spoken to some of them and they you know they are trained and there's been some certain articles in if you look at their police so magazine they have the they have the they have they've been trained and they have been capacitized it's just that the way that's in being implemented it is being practiced at the police stations and some of the police stations honestly you go in there like um bundong near um in there going to nusrat it's just one long counter yeah. that everybody is standing and then you have these um these you know people that are that are in remand being you know the criminals standing behind the bus listening to your conversation that is not a space, that is not a safe space for people to come out. So let's fix, let's work on the, the criminal system first, trying to get it out there. Mm -hmm. And I implore the family members to please, please, please pay attention. These people are hurting, they need your support, they need your help. Please pay attention. Pay attention to your little girls, pay attention to your little boys, and teach them to speak up and listen to them and believe them when they say things like this. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Silandawan. Thank you very much, Aliuba. Just like they discussed here, if you are a victim of uh, rape, uh, please speak out. And now that the Attorney General has made it easy for all of us, for all of you, uh, just speak to the police, contact the police if you can. There are organizations that you can contact, serious organization, and also uh, Fatu Baldes. You can contact both of them, and there you are assured of confidentiality. You can talk to them, and they will help you take your case to the police. And I just want to say that the WhatsApp group that we opened for the Fatu Network have been getting messages that uh, 
both uh, the, the two that we opened are all full. I think if we, even if we open about 50, it's still going to be full. So we're going to stop at that two for now. So be checking once in a while. I'm sure some people would leave. And once they leave, you can also uh, join us. What we're trying to do right there is to share all our stories, all the news articles that we have, and also our live videos, interviews, and everything. And this would also give you an opportunity to send news tips on there. Because most of the time, all these messages come on my phone. And when I'm busy, I don't uh, really see them on time to be able to treat them so you can now send all the news tips to the fatu network uh, um, 